Glory. Praise God. Is the lady, is she coming in or? Okay, okay yeah, yeah. She's coming on now. Yeah, sorry. So, about the God, they know I come on, and then they meet, they come out there. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yes, sir. God bless you, God bless you. Hello, Tayan. Hi, Yolanda. Rihanna. Chantel, hey, how you doing? Coco. God bless you, Coco. And Shannon DuPont, bless you. Donna, God bless you. Welcome in. I want you to invite some people in. Praise God today. They've been talking about a very relevant subject. <laughs> it may not be popular, but it's relevant. Hey, Zita, how you doing? Zita is my buddy, man. Zita's doing big things for God. God bless you, Zita. Man. Welcome, welcome, welcome in, welcome in. Today we are live at KISS FM 96 and we're ready to go, we're ready to go. And so we bring you another episode of Deliverance Moments. And um, I'm so excited about what God is doing in this season to His people and for His people. And so we bless God of all of you that are tuning in either by radio or through social media. God bless you all, God bless you all. And today's subject is the ancient order of bullies. <laughs> Yes, I know it sounds really weird, but I've been doing some studies on it, and I want to I wanna really see if we could track this thing called the Order of Bullies and where did it get its origins from. And so, Father, we just thank you for what you're about to do already, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise for today. God, we thank you for everyone out there that's watching and listening under the sound of my voice. God, may they be set free. May someone, Father God, be delivered today. May they hear something that will resonate with them, and we'll be sure to give you all the glory. All the praise, Lord, is because of you alone that we are here to do this. And so we thank you, God, and for all those that are standing with us, Lord, Father, God. We thank you for them, and we give you glory for them in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we want to look at the order of bullies. What and how did bullies get to be bullies? <laughs> bullies are uh, some people that can make you feel so uncomfortable. Amen. They can make you feel like you're... Uh, you know, less than human, basically. They could demean you and pick on you to the point where you want to give up. And that's what a bully's job is. A bully can back you into a corner to make you feel uh, like you're not going to make it, amen? You could feel even resentment because of the bully. And the bully doesn't always have to be someone who is bigger than you or more powerful than you. It could be someone who just has a mean spirit or they're just more aggressive than you. And they could be bullying you even in your own home. <laughs> it could be some kids are bullying their parents. <laughs> some parents are bullying their kids. Some husbands are bullying their wives. Some wives are bullying their husbands. You understand me? So it's a it's a very pervasive spirit that is uh, is endemic, so to speak. Amen. And this spirit can um, it can escalate, and that's what it is. It's an escalation spirit. It goes from pro, uh, from progression to escalation. It escalates to the place where as you will feel some sort of way. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone? And and they dominate the conversation. And whenever you try to get a word in, they constantly shoot you down or shut you down. Do you know how bad it feels sometimes? And you continue just to go along, to get along. You continue to put up with it. And you say, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to make any waves. And so you continue day in and day out to do that. And they feel like it's okay. What about the person who's always trying to run your life for you? They are trying to run your life. They're always telling you what to do. They're always using this as a point of contact to run your life. Amen. And that's what happened even in the garden with Cain and Abel. Amen. <laughs> Cain didn't like the sacrifices that Abel was given. But the Lord said, you need to master yourself, brother, because sin is crushing at your door and it wants to destroy you. And and really what it means is depression. And you say, why are you, why, are you, why is your countenance fallen? It just means cast down. It means he was depressed then. And so God was saying, if you begin to master yourself, 
and you begin to be self-disciplined, you will be acceptable too. So bullies are tyrants, really. And the word tyrant and the word bully comes from the word Nephilim. Nephilims, these were the fallen ones, amen? It, that's what they mean. They were big in stature. They were sometimes 3,000 elves, which actually equate to really 400 feet. Some of them were 30 feet, some of them were 15 feet. And in David's day, they fought giants that were 9 to 12 feet tall. And don't forget now, this brother... Goliath had four other brothers just as big and as bullyish as him. And the Bible says that he cursed and derailed and denigrated Israel and the armies of Israel and the kings of Israel and God for 40 days. That's amazing, man. Can you imagine someone coming outside and just denigrating you? denigrating you and talking about you and you can't say nothing. And the Bible says King Saul and his men were terrified. They were terrified of this big man who was a champion of God. He was known as the champion of God. Amen. He was the Philistine's champion and he was a learned man of war. And he would come out every day and say, is there no God? Is your God not a real God? And he would begin to curse them. He said, now, if you could defeat me, we'll be your servants and slaves. But if I defeat you, you will then serve us. See, he was so assured of his victory. He was so assured of his, of, of his conquest that he was able to issue the challenge. And and the Bible says they were drawn up. They, the battle lines were already drawn, but they were terrified. You hear me? They were terrified. They were quaking in their boots at this man because no doubt his reputation was one of, of, of physical prowess and he had unusual strength. Amen? He had unusual strength. Let's just take a look at, uh, at uh, the book of Enoch. Let's look at Enoch for a second and we're going to just break this down. Amen? If, if time allows. And so we're going to just move right quickly. Amen? It says here in the book of Enoch, And it came to pass... When the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. My God. You can imagine a celestial being of cosmic power, of cosmic might. Amen. Now lusting after women. There must have been something to look at. Amen. There must have been something to look at in, their, in the beginning of creation. But nevertheless, they lusted after them. That means that they watched them for over uh, uh, years and, and, and years and years and begin to lust after them. Those were, who were charged to watch over them and to watch this quadrant of the galaxy and to release knowledge to them as they progressed. These watchers and these sons of heaven or Beni Hai Elohim begin to now lust after them. And so they made a, 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 a pact or imprecation, mutual imprecation or a pact, and they went in to these women, amen, because they came down in form. It doesn't say how they looked, but we know that angels could take on form when they want to because we saw how God came down with him and his angels and they and they dwelt with Abraham, amen. They ate with Abraham and then they went on so they can take on physical form. So no doubt they came as good-looking men and they were... Uh, there were giants born to them from this as a result of that. Giants, which means Nephilim or the fallen ones. They were meant to fall. And that's where we get the word gigantism from. They were giants and they were they were very evil. Amen. And it says here, and it says, And the angels, the, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said one to another, Come, let us choose among uh, choose us wives from among the children of men and beget children. And Samjaza, who was indeed their leader, said unto them, I fear ye not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of this great sin. And they all answered, and I mean, they all answered him, excuse me, and said, Let us swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual implication. That means they make a covenant or a pact and they bound themselves to it. Amen. Not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecation upon it. And they were all uh, 200, the leaders of the fallen watchers. Amen. And they came down uh, uh, in the days of Jared on Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecation or mutual covenant. And these are the names of the leaders. Samijaz, Sami, uh, Sami, uh, Sami their leader, Ark. Ar Arakaba, Ramiel, Cocobel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Baraquil, Azriel, Abaras, Batras, Ananiel, Sequiel, Sapriel, Satriel, Truiel, Jomiel, Sariel. These are the names of the chief of ten. Man, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each 
chose themselves one and they began to go into them and defile themselves. You see, it was a it was a defilement from their order. They defiled themselves with them. Um, and they taught them charms. I mean, they taught them witchcraft. That's what it is. They taught them the cutting of roots, witchcraft. They taught them uh, uh, the plants, the knowledge of the plants. That's where we got elemental spirits from. They taught them the things of nature that they were not supposed to know at this particular time. It was supposed to be direct revelation from God in a godly way, not from a demonic source. They taught them antimony. Antimony means cosmetic and putting on, fixing your face up. These were the, in the storehouse of heaven, but it was supposed to be released in God's time. But he, what happened is they begin to release them. They begin to bring them out before God's time. And it says they they taught them a cutting roots and, made, and acquaint, made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant. And they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 L's who consumed all the acquisition of men. Do you hear me? They begin to bully men. They begin to be ferocious Big giants that were consuming. Your, if you had a if you had a farm, they would come and raid your farm. You couldn't do nothing to stop them. They will eat all your uh, all your cows because you know basically if you if you try to feed a guy who four four or five hundred feet tall or thirty feet tall, you he eat like maybe ten fifteen cows one time. They had ferocious appetite, and after a while, it says they became they became uh, the. Uh, whose height were 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisition of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds, beasts, reptiles, fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Amen. And so Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made them made known to them the laws of metal in the earth. See, God didn't want them to have this knowledge just yet. This was reserved for a, for a time. But what happened is they begin to give men knowledge. But this was a knowledge coming from, uh, 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 from these fallen beings. Amen. And so what God did is he said, I'm going to destroy all flesh on earth. Again, this was a this, this was a, 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 a an attempt to stop Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah who will bruise Satan's head, because <laughs> he will bruise his heel, which is the crucifixion. But he will bruise his head. So what happened is this big bully, the ultimate bully, began to run round now and begin to. Uh, uh, entice these watchers to, to sin, amen? And when they begin to sin, they begin to now go to defile themselves with the animals. That's where we get all these morphologies and these things that can morph, you know, a man with a cow head, a man with a bull head, a woman with a with fish tail and snake body, all these medusas and all these titans, they're real, but they were bullies. These titans are real. Son of Hercules, I mean, son of Zeus was Hercules, was a woman, was a was a man of extreme power that was a Christ-like figure in his day and he was uh, he was the offspring of Zeus and a woman and so he became godlike and that's why they have the 12 labors of Hercules but these were all bullies they were great men they were men of renown and the bible talks about it in in Genesis 6 and it also talks about Nimrod Nimrod became great in the sight of God amen that doesn't mean he was great in the sight of God in terms of being good that means he was boasting to God and he became a hunter of men that means he would destroy people by conquest and by bullying them by his might of arms he made conquest that's what a bully does a bully really is uh, a person that will coerce you, destroy you, and begin to put you in fear of who they are and what they're doing. And when they can't do it, they use something called verbal abuse. How many times have you been in a in a conversation and someone spoke some things to you and they cut you right down and they made you feel so small uh, that you felt intimidated by them? What about the guy in school who was always showing you his fists that tell you, I'm going to bust you up? And you said, what did I do to you to make you want to fight me? He said, I just don't like you. You think you smart. You think you cool. You think you this. As a matter of fact, that's what happened to me in school. I had these guys who used to come and pick with me all the time, and they were saying, "Why?" I said, "Why? Why? What did you guys?" He said, "Because the teacher like you and you are smart." And and guess what? They made me do their homework. <laughs> And they would bully me and say, listen, we put a beating on you. You don't do our homework for us. And so every evening, I would have to do these guys' homework. Or they would beat me up because they were bigger than me. And some of them weighed a lot more. Some of them were, had beard. I was in the seventh grade, and we had guys in our class who had beard. And they were physically grown. They were like 5 feet 10, 5 feet uh, 11, some of them 6 feet 2, and they were that age. They were 13 or 14. And so because of their size, they would boot you up. You were fighting them. You better do your homework. I'll do your homework, man. What else? You want me You want me to wash the car? What you want me to do? I'll carry your bag, too. Just don't beat me up. <laughs> 
This is for someone out there who been bullied. You know what I'm talking about. They make you do the whole work. Make you do all kinds of things. Take your lunch money. Amen. Make you buy the lunch. Eat out your plate. Take your food. Amen. <laughs> and you pray the girl who you like don't see him beating you up. Yeah, they're my buddies, man. They're cool. No, no, no. We can be cool. Hey, why he's tearing your head off? No, no, no. That's how we play, man. You don't know how we get down like that. And after school, you running home trying to get that bus real quick. I had to try to make it in that bus so fast. <laughs> And what about teachers now? We got some teachers who are bullies as well. They uh, they would be there and they'll pick on you all the time. They'll go their way to pick on you, just to pick on you, you know, make you come to the board. No, you can't do math. <laughs> make you come to the board. No, you can't do you can't do English. And then begin to laugh at you and deride you and then put you outside. I had a teacher who was to be straight through because, you know, I wasn't really all that good at math. You know, I, I, I didn't like math, to be honest with you. And this woman would just... just Every time, I was like, God, please don't let this woman call me. Please don't let this woman call me. So much so that I develop a headache going to class because I know she can call me up to this board and embarrass me. And I've been, I've been trying to do this thing, but I couldn't get this thing together with math. Amen? So what happened is they bring intimidation. They bring fear. And what happened is you begin to find yourself not wanting to accomplish nothing. Amen? You feel you feel limit, limited, amen? You feel limited. What about the usher in church who, <laughs> who makes you feel like you did, a, you, did, you did something evil and wicked and you broke the Ten Commandments because you say, I don't want to sit here, I'm sitting over there. <laughs> then they look at you like, I'm watching you. You can sit where I want you to sit. And all through the service, they're looking at you like, I know who you are. And you better sit right there. You ain't see the red tape here? You ain't going nowhere. And the thing about it is, that have you so bound. <laughs> what about the person in church when you go to sit down, they tell you, this my seat. Come out of my seat. I've been sitting here. My mother been sitting here. Her mother been sitting here. You need to come out of the seat. That could also turn you off too. What about in the parking lot when you park in someone's space who who uh, who goes there and they say, you know, you're in my parking space and I'm waiting for you and I'll, or I'll lock you in. I'll park my car right here so you can't get out. See, that's a spirit. Amen? It's a spirit. And so what happened is it is designed to bully you. What about on the job? When you're on the job and someone keeps uh, messing with you, they keep putting you down and knocking you down in the meetings, knocking you down on the board. And you can't do, you can't say to them because their dad or their cousin is the one who run the business. So you have to sit right there and be foaming at the mouth. And what about some people who are politically put in position, but they can't do nothing, you can't do nothing, they don't even do nothing, they don't even come to work. But when they come in, they cause all kinds of trouble and they go report back to the person who put it there. It's a real thing. It's a bullying spirit. And you can begin to grow resentful to those that bully you. What about Elijah? Let's look at Elijah. Elijah just finished, I mean, one of the most mightiest characters in the Bible. As a matter of fact, I like Elijah so much because of because he had a zeal for the Lord. He just finished killing almost 450 prophets of Baal. But they didn't tell you it was 400 other uh, prophets of Ashura. They all eat, ate at Jezebel's table. You understand me? So it was all together close to more like 900. This man just finished giving a tremendous victory and just finished destroying them. Amen? And now, here is this little old woman who probably weighed about 90 pounds, say, by the end of the day, I can make you just like one of them. <laughs> this man runs for his life. This man runs for his life. Elijah, prophet, great prophet, mighty man of God, running for his life from a little woman. So much so to the point where he was depressed. That's what, that's what it does. Bullying brings depression on you. The words cut you, so you can't begin to seem to make it. You are disoriented. It brings dis disorientation. And ultimately, it brings suicide, the spirit of suicide upon you, because you begin to wish for death. And mind you, this was only a word she said. It was only a word she sent. But what I believe is that in those same words were demonic uh, powers that sent were sent against him. But what happened is he forgot who his God was. And then he began to say, I'm the only one. So what happens is bullying makes you feel isolated, like you're the only one going through this. And so the Lord had to tell him, say, no, there are 7,000 I have that have not bowed their knees to Baal. And he had to tell him, say, get up here, go anoint Elijah, you're coming home because you're missing the point. I didn't want you to be like this because I want you to feel that you're all alone. But that's what the spirit of bullying does. Bullying will make you feel like you're all alone. It will make you feel like you're isolated. It will cause you to withdraw even from church. You'll say, man, I ain't going to church no more because that usher, <laughs> that usher is getting on my nerves every time I go there. And she was, she was like, she, she got a thing for me. Amen. And so you'll say, I've been going out to that service no more. Or I can stop coming out. And what happened is you begin to stay away from the ministry where you were supposed to be fed, where God had planted you. And because of this, 
this uh this usher and maybe she don't even know it but they're being used amen they've been used and not maybe not even aware of it or they might have also been abused themselves amen because abusers abuse bullies bully because that's what happens amen and so what happens is you begin to lose vision you lose perspective Perspective. When you've been bullied, you lose perspective. Do you see the parallels of when you're being attacked spiritually by the occultic spirit that they've sent against you? It is almost the same thing, except it's in a physical form. Amen? So you begin to lose your vision. You forget the plans you even have. What about when you keep mentioning your plans to some, someone or a particular loved one and they keep shooting it down? They keep bullying it or knocking the idea down. And every time you get this idea, they knock it down. So that's a form of that as well. Amen? And so what happens is when you begin to lose, when you begin to lose, lose vision, you begin to lose faith in who you are. You begin to lose faith in what God has planned within you. You begin to lose faith in what God said to you. That's what it does. It kills your faith. And that's why you'll see a person come up to you and say, I don't like you, never did like you. And they begin to pick on you. Why? Because they are aware of what is going on in you. They see something. And if they don't see, they just don't like you. Then they're being used by who? The enemy, the adversary. <coughs> and what happened is they can be cyber bullying. They can be bullying in the school, which is we've been seeing a lot recently. And we've been seeing people who died as a result of this. Let me tell you something, saints. The first thing you need to do is you need to ask your children, is there anybody bullying your children? I had to literally go to school for my son because uh, he was he was excelling at school, like me too, getting all his great all his good grades and gotten all his A's. And so what happened is this guy was jealous of him because of it and took his calculator and began to take things from him every day. And the guy was not even much bigger than him, but the guy had a main spirit. And so what happened is he didn't want to tell me. So someone told me, some another another student told me. So I came to the school and I saw him and I, I said, hey, how you doing, man? I said, I know you're a good kid, you know. I use reverse psychology and I say, I know that you can look after my son. Amen? And I say, I know that you got him covered. And I, I said, come, 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 come. I said, whatever it is, I want you all to squash this. And from that day forward, he was never able to bully him. See what happened, saints, is he wasn't he wasn't gonna tell me. And that's what happened to a lot of children. They wanna they wanna make the dad or mom proud. They wanna act like everything is cool. Sometimes they they you drop them to school and they look like they go to school, but they duck school because they don't want to get a beat down from the gang or a, 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 a group of guys that pick on them. Or what happened is the group of guys could see that a particular young lady love you or like you and she's you know she has a thing for you and the one of the guys who's the bully or the head of the group or the gang could be jealous of it and resent you and so they could begin to persecute you amen and if you don't talk to someone if you don't tell your mother tell the principal or even uh, record them doing that and take it to the police or tell the police what's going to happen is eventually it escalates like i say bullying is a escalating spirit because it came from the nephilim amen and whether they know it or not they're operating in the nephilim spirit whether they're aware of it or not and god hates bullies amen and that's why god had to cut goliath head off he had to show them man listen you you coming right here and you cursing me out who are you who are you to defy the armies of the living god i can cut your head off i can destroy you just like how we kill the, the bear and the lion and when they come at me i kill them i can do you just like because you only an animal and he says man listen i can give your birds i can i can eat your uh, I, can, I can eat i can destroy you and i can feed your, your bones to the birds and i can do this to you do that to you see what they was doing is a war of words it was a war of words so so he was trying to what speak curses on him and when <clears throat> when he when when uh when uh the, the battle was engaged, he said, "Man, listen, this 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 a little child. You, will you bring? Oh, I'm a dog. You probably bring this little child out to fight me. Am I a dog or something like that? You bring a little child out to fight me." And it says that he saw that he was good looking, and handsome, and probably saying, "You know, go 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 sit down, boy. You you're, you're no match for me." And 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 David and David said, "I can kill you today." You, you can die today. And he ran towards him. My God, he ran towards a 12 feet person. <laughs> you know that's an excellent spirit. Hey, come on, come on, think about it. But what's funny is his brother said, why are you here? You conceited and you're, and you're nosy and, and you, why are you going to go home to the sheep? See, that's another bullying tactic. You know, that's the big brother. That's the big brother syndrome. Same thing happened with the prodigal son. You never even give me and my friends a goat. And you're giving this dude who ran away, take all his money and doing all this. You're giving him this big feast. You know, it's the big brother syndrome again. Oh, oh, oh look at you. Uh, you ain't giving me nothing. So he said, he said, he said, you know, hey, am I not allowed to ask? What's wrong? I ain't, I ain't doing nothing wrong. You know, and guess what happened? From the day he killed Goliath, he never left the king's house, and he was made one of the mighty men of the king, amen? And he went on all kinds of missions, and he excelled because the Lord was with him. Some people say, get from around here. What you doing around here? This is your time. Men of man wanted to be healed, blind Bartimaeus. He said, he said, son of man, can you heal me? Thou son of David, can I be healed? And the Lord healed him, amen? They said, be quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't talk. 
Be quiet. Some people tell you be quiet. Do not be quiet when you're being bullied. Do not be quiet. Say something because these bullies are going to escalate on you. They will escalate this thing. And we've seen recently in the last several months where a lot of children were being murdered because of the bullying spirit. You can imagine sending your child to school and they come home and uh, you get a call saying your child was, 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 uh, was murdered in a, in a fight or they were killed and ganged on and beaten to death. Do you know the feeling of that mother or that parent? Amen. And, and, and I, I want to tell you something. That didn't happen just then and there. That was going on for months, maybe even years. But they never said nothing about it because they didn't want to, didn't want to get you involved. Amen. The best thing you can do, uh, uh, saints, and even listen to your children. Amen. When they're talking to you about certain things or oh, this one picket on them. I'm not saying you must go there and beat the children. That's not your... That's not your uh, mandate that's not for you to do but you must listen to them and don't take it lightly because they're trying to tell you in their own way that they're being bullied amen and can i tell you that bullies really are scared and vulnerable people they're vulnerable scared people so they use fear as a tactic they don't want you to see how scared and terrified they are because chances are they have a dad who terrifies them or a big cousin or a big brother that absolutely terrifies them so they don't want you to see how deep and wounded they are, so they use bravado, they use braggadociousness, they use evil words, they use uh, uh, these things to bully you and to beat you because they're insecure within them own selves. They're really insecure people, and they're deep down inside themselves. They're really paranoid, terrified, and vulnerable, and they're hoping that you don't see their weakness. And so they use that uh, uh, that that bullying tactic to cover up their vulnerability. Amen. And they have they have no self-worth they lack true self-worth and they lack confidence and so for them to be confident they must bully you they get off on seeing you being bullied that's what demons do when they come at you at night times when they're doing that at night time what do you think they're doing they're bullying you when a witch is chasing you in your dream when people in your whole neighborhood is chasing your dream you're dreaming about them chasing you all around what is that that's a bullying spirit they put in fear in you they want to have you in fear when you see they're doing these traumatic things to you it is to open you up to a of fear and so so when you see this happening saints this is what will happen they, they will break down and bring confusion into the individual's heart amen and so the bully really is satan attacking you through the individual again whether they are aware of it or, or not they are being used by the enemy to attack you because the enemy sees something in you and so the enemy has to target you and find fault with you and make you lose control that's what terrorism is terrorism and terrorists are global bullies and they use these terror terrorist um, terrorist acts to bring the world into control that's why they go and they will strap c4 into themselves and go into a mall and call on their God's name. It is to bring fear into you. And so that's why I like America. America says the number one thing is we will not negotiate with terrorists. You shall not negotiate with any bully. You must stand firm. I don't say you must get mad and angry and go fight them. But stand firm. Look them in the eye and let them know that you won't be bullied. Let them know that I'm not the one. Let them know that you have more back in you than they can think about. Just like when those people came against Elijah and Elijah's servant of saying, man, listen, I'm in terror look at them when he looked in the water he saw the armies uh so far that that he was like oh my god they got us now and what happened is the lord said open his eyes i i'm sorry elijah asked the lord to open uh uh gehazi that was him they didn't say his name but that's gehazi gehazi's eyes so gehazi could see and he saw the chariots of fire and the angels that are all around them and they were much more than them and so the lord uh was able to reveal the hidden uh, the hidden angels that are there says they are more of us than they are bullies, amen, even on the job. And the Lord smote them through the word of Elijah with blindness. Can you imagine you come to beat someone and you come, you bring a whole army and he had to dry you out? That's humiliating. And the Bible says they never went back in, the, in Israel anymore. They never came back because of the humiliating defeat. And so what you have to recognize, saying, if you're being bullied, please let your parent know, let a big brother know, let a big cousin know, but you also must do it in love and you must be firm, but you must also not do it in anger and you must begin to record them when they're doing this and tell someone who is an authority figure because like i say satan 
is the one behind them doing that to you because he sees your potential. He sees what you will be in life. And so he's trying to bring fear and intimidation and control and domination, which is really the Jezebel spirit all over again. The Jezebel spirit is a spirit of intimidation and control and bullying. It's a bullying spirit. But when a bully is confronted, some of them cry like girls when they get beat. As a matter of fact, when it happened to me several years ago and I went and I started to do martial arts and I grew over the summer, I confronted that bully eventually and I almost knocked him out. I actually wiped the floor with him and I beat him very bad for all those times what he did to me. It was because I got tired, amen? But I had to confront him. Back in the day, we used to do the fist and cuff. Now they want to shoot you. Now they want to stab you and then we be friends the next day. As a matter of fact, to this day right now, me and him are best friends. Very good friends, amen? But, you know, that's how you earn your respect. Uh, you earn your respect by you standing up to that bully, amen? And so, in this day, is a little different, amen? You might have to really get uh, the authorities involved. You might have to tell your, 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 uh, your father or mother. And you might have to also tell... Uh, uh, the principal, amen, and call the police. Don't be afraid to get the law involved because they're now getting involved in the schools. That's why a lot of times you see police at the school. They're trying to prevent this bullying spirit because it will come to you wherever you are, cross-sectional, amen. It will come to you in the church and even it'll come to you on your job because that spirit loves to control. It loves to manipulate. It loves to dominate. It loves to steal your joy, steal your vision, and it wants to bring a spirit of defeatism on you. It wants you to operate in defeatism and it wants you to be... Uh, uh, so passionate towards quitting and giving up. Yes, you'll want to give up. You'll say, this even ain't worth it no more. Why even go through this? I don't need to go through this no more. And these are the characteristics of a witchcraft sting. This is what they do. They come at you to make you give up. You feel like giving up for no reason. You want to quit the ministry. You want to quit life. That's the, That means that you've been stung. Amen? You've been stung by that same spirit. It's a bullying Nephilim demonic spirit that was around from the beginning of time. Amen? And so we got to be aware of it and we got to be educated concerning these things. And do not allow anybody to intimidate us, to dominate us, to control us, even with even with even with nice, cool word, even with flattery. Amen. You gotta be careful of that flattery spirit. I'm not saying I don't have a good compliment, but be careful of flattery. Amen. So God bless you, God bless you, and we give God glory. Until next time, I ask that the Lord will watch between us and, and, and you and yourselves and all those that are uh, under your care. Amen? And so we ask God to uh, help you be aware of the bully and to take measures concerning it. God bless you, and I love you all. Until next time, we will see you real soon. God bless you. This is Prophet Peter signing off. Amen and amen.